just want to encourage you this afternoon to just remind us really about our identity in God and what it all means. In Romans chapter twenty uh, chapter eight, verse twenty eight it starts off, and we know that God causes all things to work together for good. God causes all things to work together for good. What a great statement. But we've got to look at the context in which that comes, because it's not just a statement in isolation. If we continue in that verse, and that when it says God causes all things to work together for good, he's talking about things cooperating or coordinating for good. We, want to, we all want to go towards good. That's, that's a good way to aim, isn't it? We don't want to aim towards bad. We're, at, we're aiming towards good. So when you start reading the rest of that verse, there are conditions attached to that statement. In order that, all th that God causes all things to work to the, for good, he says, to those who love God. To those who love God. He doesn't mention anything about maturity or how far along the line you are or, or anything. It just says, in, 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 like what he said to Peter, do you love me? Do you love me? So he's, asking, he's saying that to those who love God. And it says to those who are called. Now I want to expand on that. But that word called means invited, chosen, appointed. Now we probably feel that we're all, we're all called. We're all chosen and appointed. He's chosen us. You know, we, he's, he's, he's given the internet invitation out across humanity. But not everybody's accepted the invitation. But we have. That's why we're here. That's why we, we, we're in church. That's why we're seeking to live the lives that we do. Because the invite, the the the, the the invitation that God gave us, we've accepted. No matter how imperfect we are, he's given us that invitation and he's called us, he's invited us. And it says, according to his purpose. Now, when I first read that, I thought it meant my purpose. But when you, you look, if you look at these Bibles that have capital letters, when God is mentioned or Jesus, he says, when the word his is in capital letters. So it's saying according to God's purpose. So we've been called, we've been invited, but it's according to God's purpose. So when you start reading that a, a, a bit like, we get a better understanding of, I mean, God wants us uh, things to work together for good for you and me. He really does want that. That's what love does, isn't it? Love wants the best. <coughs> So if we just expand, expand that reading a little bit, that's it, that was verse 28. So we just go back to verse 26. In that Romans chapter 8, verse 26, it says, And in the same way, the Spirit also helps our weakness. I hope God knows we're weak. That's a good thing, isn't it? That we, we know that God knows that we're weak. He helps our weaknesses. The Spirit helps our weakness. For we do not know how to pray as we should. Who doesn't know really how, how to pray as you should? You get circumstances, you get things you need to pray about. And you, I can't find the words. I can't manipulate the words right to, to convey what I feel inside. But he says, the Spirit knows how to pray. We, we do not know how to pray as we should, but the Spirit himself intercedes. The Holy Spirit intercedes for us before God. He, he, 
what we feel in our heart, the Holy Spirit can convey to, to God, through, through words to God. It says, will intercede for us with groanings too deep for words. And he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is. So God's in tune with the Holy Spirit. He's in tune with our spirit within us. But he says, because he intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. He intercedes. He intercedes for us. When we seek to talk to, to God the Father, the Spirit intercedes for us, helps us to, to formulate to God what we feel, what we think, what we can't really express in words sometimes. <coughs> so the Holy Spirit is involved all across the, the lives. You see, we, we're told that when, we, when we're saved, the Spirit comes to, to reside in us. That's, that's it, at, at, at the point of salvation. In Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, I'm not going to turn to it, I've got it written down here. It says, it says tells us that we are his workmanship. We're God's workmanship. He's made us. He knows every single aspect of us. But he says, we were created in Christ Jesus for good works. We were created to do something. To be something. We were created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in it. Now, this, this is what blows your mind, what, what Andrew was talking the other week. It says that God prepared beforehand the works that we should walk in. How does that work? Before I even existed, he's already set the plan out. For me, for you. And we, we stumble along thinking, how, how are we living? And God's got it all mapped out for us. There's times when we would perhaps rebel against his planning. You know, we think we know better than he does sometimes. He's, he's telling us through his spirit that we go one way and we want to go another and sometimes we go the way that we want and it, it, it can have consequences but the wonderful thing is that, that God can bring us back on track God, God's heart is always open to us we're a work in progress we're a work in progress if you think you're perfect that's your biggest mistake we're imperfect beings trying to learn to be like Christ. He's, he's told us in his word how we should be. But you see, God's, to, to use a, a local euphemism, it, it, God's put his, his money where his mouth is. Because when God, when we accepted Jesus Christ, we gained an inheritance. We're not just going along trying to do good. When, when I went to the, the Methodist church, my thinking was, oh, well, I'm just going to try and do good. I, I, I never consciously heard the message of salvation as such. I just thought I could do good. But in Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 11, it tells us that we have obtained an inheritance. Ephesians 1 verse 11. We have obtained an inheritance, having been predestined according to his purpose. That predestined again is this plan beforehand. He's got the plans laid out for us, for you and for me. It says predestines according to his purpose. So the plans he's made are for his purpose, our benefit, his purpose. Who works all things after the counsel of his will. That's his will and purpose. He's, he's pulling it all together. You know, sometimes we're thinking, 
we're, we're living a, an anarchaic life, a, a rebellious life in a, in a sense that we, we're doing the daily, daily things that we do. We, we're doing what we can when we can, where we can. And it, it, sometimes it all seems a muddle. You know, we get stressed out for things. We get worried about things. Things don't work out as we plan. So God really has got it all planned out. And the, and the things that we worry and fret about, God's really got it covered. Because he's adopted us as sons. We're, we're his sons. We, we've got a, a relationship with him that is not just a, a, a friend relationship, employer relationship, even just a, an ordinary family relationship. We are the sons. The sons are the ones that inherit I mean, do, do you realize that God has called you? Th this, is a, this is a fundamental thing. I know we, that we talked about having a calling. I'll, I'll stay with that in a bit. But at the time that you heard, of, heard, heard about the, the, the message of salvation, and the time that you accepted it was the process that God was calling you. You think it all happened on your own mental, you know, interest or whatever. But God had, God had drawn you. He was drawing you to himself. He was calling you. Just turn to, to John chapter 1, verse 12, quickly. John chapter 1, verse 12. It says... But as many as did receive... Oh, <laughs> the right, I altered the word in a bit. I'll read it as it says. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God. If you receive Jesus, if you receive salvation, if you receive him, he's given you the right to become his child. That's what it's saying. Because I, I, I altered it. I said, but as many as did receive him, to them he gave the right to become children of God. That right, the word for that is power. He gave you the power or the authority to become children of God. Even to those who believe on his name. So he's, he's confirming it there. If you receive Jesus into your life, if you receive his salvation, you are a child, a son of the living God. It tells us in, in Matthew, uh, oh, there was another one as well I just wanted to show, share. In Galatians chapter 4, just, just turn to Galatians chapter 4. Verse 4 to 7. It says, But when the fullness of the time came, God sent forth his Son, born of a woman, born under the law. Of course, we were all under the law. Without God, everybody was under the law. That was their, their, their level to, to measure to. It says, In order that he might redeem those who were under the law. That we might receive the adoption as sons. Very clear that. He's redeemed us that we might receive the adoption as his son, as, as sons of God. And because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into our hearts. God sent forth the, his spirit into you and me. Triune Abba, Father. You know that, that word Abba is, equates to when we used to call our, our, our dad, da, Daddy. We, we think it's in the tune. I remember King Charles, uh, King Charles as he was then, called his 
um, mummies and daddies. Nobody had told him any different, so that was a very immature sounding thing for him to, to say. Uh, I mean, I continue to call my mother mum, but my dad is dad, <laughs> not, not daddy. But this, uh, this has a, this is like a child calling a parent, addressing the parent, because it's a, it's a belonging. There's so much belonging. <coughs> but it says in Matthew 22, verse, uh, verse 14, it says that for many are called, but few are chosen. So God calls many into his kingdom. But few, it says few are chosen. Now in the message, it, it makes it a bit clearer to understand. It says in the message that says many get invited but there are only a few make it. Many get invited, but only a few make it. We've, we've received the call of God on our lives. We've, we've, we've responded to him, and we've come to him. We all are failing, we all are coddling, but the wonderful thing again is we've received his sonship, and, and that's priceless. You know, we sang about, you know, more precious than silver and gold. To, to belong to God is more precious than any silver or gold. So you, you, you were born again. You are born from above. That's in uh, John, is it John 2, 3 or whatever. John, John, anyway, when, the, when Nicodemus came, you must be born again. And he couldn't understand it. But you're born into sonship. You could have said to Rhoda, she was in here, yeah. You're born into sonship. You're born, you have a relationship with God that is son and father. Child and father. It says, if you know, you've got to accept it as little children. And, and I suppose that's what we are to, to God. Yeah, John, John chapter 3, verse 3 says, unless one is born again, or born from one, he cannot, he says, he cannot see the kingdom of God. <coughs> Excuse me. That see means experience. He cannot experience the kingdom of God. Excuse me. <laughs> Thank you. <coughs> he says, he cannot see or experience the kingdom of God. And he has to be born again. We've come to that. We, we have been born again. Now, if you go back to that, that Romans chapter 8, there's another verse I want to read there. Yeah, <coughs> verse 30. And it says, whom he predestined, he also called. Predestined is God's intention, right? According to God's intention, he called you. It says, and whom he called, these he also justified. You've received Christ, you've been justified. You've been absolved from sin. We're into divine favour, his divine favour. That's grace, isn't it? We're into his grace. We, we, we're part of him. We're so, we're so connected that we, and we don't realise it half the time. And it says, and whom he justified, these he also glorified. Now that, that confused me a bit when I read that word glorified. That's what we say about him. He's glorified. If you're glorified, the word glorified means honoured. Whom he justified, these he also honoured. He's honouring you and me. Because we're his child, we're his sons. He's, 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 he's giving us honour. So, what does it mean to be called? Remember that calling 
What does it mean to be cold? He's cold as, what is he called as from fear? But we're called out of the world, out of the world system, out of the world's fleshly humanity. We're called out of that. Uh, and we're going to through 19. I'll put you in there in just a minute. <clears throat> yeah, John 15, 19, and, and this is Jesus uh, actually speaking this. It says, if you were of the world, the world would love its own. Right? If you're in the world, the world will love you. But because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. So there's going to be a conflict between God and, and the world. Because the world is living through a different set of rules. And we see that, the, the, the way the laws are, are coming now, the, the, the time to put in and the, the, the attitudes that that are, are, are coming in the world. There's so many agendas, which are, which are dark agendas, that, that's, that's driving things in, in, a, in a different direction today. So yes, the world will hate those that stand up for, the, for God, that stand up and get on to. The world's going to hate them because the world system identifies a different level of right and wrong if you like so it goes, goes by what's acceptable or not acceptable God's right and wrong never changes and never will <coughs> it's interesting that the, the, the Greek the Greek word for church or well you know the word ecclesiastic that we get from well that comes from Greek, the Greek ecclesia now, ecclesia, apparently, is, is two, two words combined. It means an assembly and called out ones. So, the ecclesia, the church, the, the, that word that stems from that original word, means assembly of called out ones. Why are we called out? We're called out from the world system. Now, that, that doesn't mean we don't obey authorities or anything like that. It doesn't mean that. It means the culture, the culture of the world, we are drawn out of. We are separate. So when we come to church, <coughs> when we come to Ecclesia, we come into assembly of called out ones. Well, we're all called out ones. Right? You... you you're, you're living in the world, you're living, you have to, 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 to live in the world, but we're not of the world. We don't accept the world's standard uh, of morality and everything else. We, we look at the word of God and we say, and we look at what God's standard is. We may not always attain it, but that's what we're looking at as our standard. <coughs> Excuse me. So just moving on that on that cold business. It says we can also have a calling. Now, this is slightly different. This is more having a mission and a purpose. We're, we're, we're called by God to receive him. And from that we get adoption of sons. He can give us a calling, which is to do things. Now, I, I was just looking at, well, mainly in the Old Testament, the early part of the Old Testament. And... God said to a few people, and I just want to just quickly mention these. Noah, in Genesis 6.14, God said, make yourself an ark. 
Abraham in Genesis 12, verse 1, he said, God said, go forth from your country. Jacob in Genesis 28, 13, God said, the land on which you lie, I will give you. Gideon in Judges 6, 14, go in this your strength and deliver Israel. And then we got, in the New Testament, we got Paul. <coughs> Paul was confronted by God on, on the road. Uh, that's in Acts uh, 9, well, Acts chapter 9, verse 3 to 6. And, it, and the voice says, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And then he gives him Paul instructions, rise and enter the city, and it shall be told you what you must do. So God speaks to, to individuals. Now, when you read in the Old Testament, it says, God said, and then, now, I don't know whether that was an audible voice or, or what or whatever, but certainly in Paul's case, in the New Testament, they heard noise because it frightened them. So they, they heard something. But I don't know if that when, when Noah was told, make yourself an ark, whether that was an audible instruction from God, whether it's something he sensed that he, he needed to do, because sometimes we get this conviction inside that we need to do something. <coughs> Or, or they, were they just looking for to do the right thing? It could have been any or all or, or, or a combination of those. But it's clear that God spoke. God spoke to them in some way. Um, <coughs> so I don't know whether they sort of were common symbols or whatever, but sometimes you know that you know. If, if you feel that, that they sense that you need to do something. It, it's happening for a reason. <coughs> See, God, God could be calling you. He could be calling me. And it, it's important that we hear his voice. I suppose that's one of the reasons that we, we spend time looking at his word. We spend time he, hearing things about God and, and, and what's happening. You might be using your talents in a certain way. You might have multiple talents that you're using now. And that could be a calling from God. You might not realize it as a, as a, um, a calling, but the fact that you're using your talents in a certain way uh, could, could be the calling that you've got. It's just that we don't identify it necessarily. Um, I, for example... Let me share the going to town and, and we'll, we'll spend time in town witnessing. Nobody's got a gun to the back saying, go and do that. But somewhere inside of them, they will have heard, this is what we need to do. This is, this is, this is a, a, like you say, a God mission. They, they, they're called to do it in some way or other. And in similar ways, I mean, you might have someone to look after. You know, that, 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 that is a calling to look after somebody because you design yourself in order to, to help that other person. So there's all sorts of ways that, that we can receive callings. We, we're thinking of these as magnificent things where we go abroad and we're doing missionary and things like that. But calling can be a, a very more basic uh, thing that, that we that God's given us talents to use and we need those talents even the, 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 the musical talents that, that, uh, that people have the, the, the talents that God gives us if you've got a call in a certain direction you've got a, an expertise that God can use you know he's, he's not going to turn around and say to somebody that can't cook come on go and cook He's, he's going to choose somebody that can cook and say, you're nothing special. Uh, but th th there's also, that's the only uh, example, but just, just be aware that 
that can call you and may have called you, and, but you don't identify it necessarily as a calling, but something you're, you're doing to fulfill, to fulfill a need. <coughs> so a calling is a mixture of things. It might, I say you might not be all drums and thunder getting uh, information through to you. Yeah, you might not be a, a sound from heaven, but you'll be doing that, that which is right. You'll be doing that which is what is required. You'll be doing the things that are needed. You'll be filling the gap. And in, in, a, in, a, in some way or other, you will hear in God leading you in a, cer in a certain way, in a certain area, to fulfill so, some need or other. I mean, it might be a pioneering thing, you know. I mean, it's like Stephen said, heard the call, and he's heeded the call, and he's, he's going to, to be a minister at English Hall. So he's, he's not got planning singing as in somebody beating a drum, telling him. He knows in his heart that that's what he's, that, that, that's what he's to do, that is what he's called to do. <clears throat> Just delve back into the Old Testament in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 6. It says, In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make your path straight. Now that's in my New American Standard Bible. In the King James, it says, Instead of make your path, path straight, it says he'll, he'll direct your path. But that word acknowledge, in all your ways, acknowledge him. It's a bit of a weak word, that. It doesn't really tell you. The, the word that you need to put in there, instead of that knowledge, is the word know. K-N-O-W. In all your ways, know him. Because if you identify with him, he will make you. He will direct your path. So it's, it's connected knowing and learning just what he wants you to do, who he wants you to be. Proverbs chapter 11 verse 5 says, The righteousness of the blameless will smooth his way. It does sound a little bit difficult to understand that. But when I read it in the message, it says, moral character makes for smooth travelling. That simplifies it, doesn't it? Moral character makes for smooth travelling. That's what God wants to see is moral character. Psalm 37, 23 says, the steps of a good man are established or ordered by the Lord. talks about righteousness, it talks about us being righteous. We can't achieve righteousness on our own. Only God can achieve it through us as we step in line with what he says. In, in going right to the back of the Bible, 3 John verse 11 says, the one who does good is of God. So if you're do, doing good, you can be assured you're of God. We might not always get it right, but God's got us going in the right direction. <clears throat> I just want to uh, really finish with a, a couple of the letters that Peter wrote at the back of the Bible. The, the first the first epistle of Peter, the first letter that Peter wrote, chapter 1, and that first, and, and just verse 3 to 5. Now this, this really explains something of what I'm going to try to explain. It says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his great mercy has caused us to be born again 
to a living hope. You're born again to a living hope. Through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. It all hinges on that. We, go, we are born again to a living hope. It says, to obtain an inheritance, sonship, inheritance. We get an internal inheritance, which is imperishable and undefiled and will not fade away, reserved in heaven for you. Absolutely reserved in heaven for you. Who are protected by the power of God. Do you feel you're protected? You're protected. It says you're protected by the power of God. So all the situations you go through in your life, and some you, you'll feel there's no escape from. But it says you are protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. What a wonderful, secure promise that is. Protected by the power of God. Hallelujah. Now, if we go to the second letter, in the first, in the, in the first chapter, second uh, Peter, chapter one again, verse three again, strangely enough. Now, this is here from verse three to verse ten. seeing that his, his divine power has granted to us everything pertaining to life and godliness. His divine power has granted you everything pertaining to life and godliness. That's a gift from God. It says, through the true knowledge of him, who called us by his own glory and excellence. He called us. It says he called us by his own glory and excellence. For by these he has granted to us his precious and magnificent promises. God has granted us magnificent, precious promises in order that by them you might become partakers of the divine nature. You've seen the divine nature in Jesus. Our Lord Jesus, he is the divine nature. He brought it down onto this earth to show us that we can live in that nature. We can seek to, to rise up to that nature. Partakers of the divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world by lust. See, we're separate from the world. We've escaped the world, the corruption in the world. It might affect us physically, but in our spirits, it says we have escaped the corruption that is in the world by lust. Now, for this reason also, applying all diligence in your faith, supply moral excellence and in your moral excellence, knowledge. And in your knowledge, self-control, and your self-control, per perseverance. And in your perseverance, godliness. And in your godliness, brotherly kindness. And in your brotherly kindness, love. That's a process of, of, of growing. I, there's, there's, it goes through so many there. Because you have to list the progression. So we've got faith. Moral excellence, so we're moving up that way. Knowledge, self-control, perseverance, godliness, brotherly kindness, love. And love is the key. It says, for if these qualities are yours and are increasing, they, re they render you neither useless nor unfruitful. Have you ever felt useless? Well, you're not. You're not. God tells you you're not. Because we, 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 we're working through these, you know, faith, moral excellence and everything. We're working up to that. 
what it says in a little bit later on. It says, these qualities are yours, and they're increasing. And it says, they render you neither useless nor unfruitful in the true knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Don't ever think you're useless. Don't ever think you're unfruitful. You are. God sees it. It says, for he who lacks these qualities is blind or short-sighted, having forgotten his purification from his former sins. It's talking about backsliding. I know it's possible to do that. You know, that, that, that you, you look back in the world and you're attracted by what's in the world. But it has no lasting, no lasting satisfaction. <coughs> it says, therefore, brethren, be all the more diligent to make certain about his calling and choosing you. Make certain about his calling and choosing you. Make sure you hold on to his calling. Make sure you hold on to it in the fact that he's chosen you. You know, he's, the invitation's gone out to across the world. His invitation's gone out. A bit like the wedding feast. Not, they offered him, just do you want to know? Or do you go and speak to him now? They don't want to know. They're throwing their invitation away. God's calling them. And they're just throwing it away. But it says, as long as you practice these things, you will never stumble. He's got you secure. No matter where you go, what you're doing, what, what comes at you in life. But it says, as long as you practice these things, you will never stumble. Brother Connor, that's just, that's just, just God telling us that we're covered. We've got, we've got this assurance inside. Knowing we're not perfect, but we're adopted as sons. You know, if you brought up a son or a daughter, you know they weren't perfect. There were times when they could have pulled your hair out. But you never stopped loving them. And even if they went their own way, you know, they, they, they still loved them. But God's here. He's, he's pulling it down and, and writing. You, you read that, that first chapter, that second chapter at home and, and, and just get hold of it yourself. God's got such a promise. He's got such a, 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 a calling on us that will not, will not go away. I just wrote something out. This is in, in 2 Peter chapter 1. I think the, the, the verse, it verse 11. Yeah, it says, the verse 11, it says, For in this way, the entrance into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ will be abundantly, abundantly supplied to you. For in this way, the entrance into the eternal kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ, you know, heaven, his kingdom, it says, of our Lord Jesus Christ, will be abundantly supplied to you. In abundance. What a wonderful promise. What a wonderful promise and what a wonderful Lord. And we just have to keep moving and trying to, to listen and respond to the Father as he listens. He sends us into it, into, into the final. So if somebody says about your salvation, says, tell them, I was called and I accept it. And I know where I'm going. And I know that you've got the journey mapped out for me. Hallelujah. Praise God. <coughs> 